All right, now it's time for a special new recurring segment, which we're calling the Mocha Moment. We'll be catching up with the team at Mochaverse on a monthly basis, given the breadth and depth of their special growing ecosystem, Mochaverse. So Mochaverse is the Animoca brand's membership NFT collection of 8,888 unique beings, the Mochas. They are building the world's largest Web3 identity pass in culture and entertainment, empowering personal growth, partner project growth, and the growth of adoption of Web3 in general. For full disclosure, our parent company, Edge of Company, lies within the Mochaverse ecosystem. This regular segment is sponsored as part of our media partnership. Today, we'll focus on some exciting updates around Mochaverse's participation in ApeCoin DAO with our guest, Tyler Durden, who leads Mochaverse and is also head of projects at Animoca Brands. Tyler, welcome to Edge of NFT. Can't wait to chat. Thanks for having me. Very excited to be here. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, we've been talking a lot since uh, you guys joined us at Outer Edge LA and we of course minted our mochas and and you know this segment is part of sort of our ongoing partnership to sort of bring more visibility to what you guys are doing in the space of course um we're doing all sorts of fun content together uh tyler thanks to you and your team i got to check off something on my bucket list that i never thought i would ever do which is to moderate a, a presidential election of sorts with the special counsel that was a lot of fun thanks for that well, I hope you had fun. It's been a pretty exciting session back then. Yeah, yeah, it got a little feisty. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about that during uh, this special uh, segment. But just to kick things off, remind us and the audience of significance of Mochaverse holding these 1.5 million eight coins. And as a result, uh, why the special council election was the first proposal uh, the Mocha DAO decided to vote on. Well, it's definitely an, uh, so I would say it's a social experiment and an experiment in Web3 to actually do something like that. We we're actually, I think we we're probably the first community to get delegated a huge chunk of governance tokens um, to a NFT community and further decentralize the voting rights um, to the Mochaverse holders. And that is just aligning with the ethos that Animoca Brands has been advocating for which is decentralization and DAO. So it's actually very exciting to do something like that. And it's definitely an experiment. Um, and this experiment has been very exciting. I would say the first proposal to be voting on um, the eight point uh, special council and the steward election, the mainly the reason is because we want to show good gesture and that's like the first step that we want to take. Um, actually previously, there was a proposal from one of our subsidiary companies, Forge, proposing about eight coin accelerator. Um, uh, and Mochaverse uh, decided to vote abstain. The whole reason being like we don't want the first vote to be voting in favor um, of um, some some companies and the project that is affiliated with any Mocha brand. So um like even though we don't have full control over the voting rights um but the mocha first we still want to uh show good gesture um but i'm still happy harry to get like the a best salary to pass and congratulations to him like kudos has been working really hard for now yeah and and there was a lot of of um folks that stepped up to um take this this seat in the special council do you do you recall how many uh candidates there were uh, I believe it's about 20 um, special counsel yeah. uh, candidates. And I would say most of them, uh, maybe 17, 18 of them are already in the Moke First Discord server. So they have been like talking to us and the community on a daily basis to make sure that the community make um, educated and informed decisions. So even like there's uh, one of the special counsel um a uh, candidate basically just made a tweet about like how surprised he is to receive DMs from Mochaverse holders. And they actually reach out and be like, hey, can you share with us more about your vision and all that? So Mochaverse holders are not just voting for the sake of voting. Like they really care about the A-point community. And it's like a really good first step in terms of cross-community synergy and collaboration. Yeah, it sounds like a, a fun process. And um it's 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 
complicated, you know, whenever there's boating involved and, and, uh, and that kind of stuff. But I'm, I'm curious, you know, how the process of voting, any resulting engagement, did this match your expectations? You know, is there anything you kind of would like to see more of in the future when it comes to this type of thing? Yeah, I would say the result um, is, is pretty great and the reaction from the community is super positive. And um, at, like we set our quorum at 5% of the MOCAs. So we have about like 6,200 circulating MOCAs. 5% um, of that is about 300 MOCAs. And surprisingly, we got 1,300 MOCAs that voted. So it's actually great as four more than four times the quorum um, and a, a lot of them are still waiting to vote because they want to wait until they get all the information before making their decision so um, i would say it's overwhelming and i would say another really great reaction is not only from the mochaverse community but also from the ape community so you can also see on uh, ct right now there's actually a bunch of tweets about like um, ape point and mochaverse um, collaboration and actually working uh, together on this and um, the, the the thing that we keep asking and the Mochaverse holders keep asking is really like how do you foresee uh, you as special counsel can actually bring uh, synergies collaboration um, with the rest of the web3 communities and people are asking questions not only really about Mochaverse only but actually everyone is so interested about um, how ApeCoin is going to spread the influence, not only within the Ape community, right? Because a lot of people misunderstand that, like ApeCoin is only for Yuga Labs uh, NFT assets, but that's not true. Actually, ApeCoin is very independent from the Yuga Labs ecosystem. Even though, like by design, uh, previously the airdrop was to Yuga Labs NFTs, but then um, like that, that probably, uh, I would say account for a huge chunk of the A coin, but then at the same time, everyone can buy an A coin and everyone, uh, even with one A coin, they can participate in DAO. So um, yeah, I would say that's very interesting to see. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you have some insight into this. I remember it was, I think it was just after our first NFTLA 2022 was around the time ApeCoin was minting. I, I was, I was, I was, I think it was afterwards because it's just like relaxing, taking a little break in, in sort of the wilderness of, of LA and happened upon this little shop where this one was selling crafts and things. And uh, we started talking about blockchain and she said she bought some ape coin. <laughs> I said, wow, I, I just, you know, I'm surprised that you know about this and what's going on. And I said, where did you hear about it? And she said, Oprah. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know how, how Oprah's got involved with ApeCoin, but I think that's fascinating, um, uh, that she's out there, uh, proselytizing the, the well, good word. Probably, she probably hosts the biggest bank right now. You never know. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, fascinating. <laughs> yeah. You never do know, but, but I think, um, it's worth underscoring, uh, the, the, the importance of, of what's happening here in the macro picture, right. Of, um, you know, uh, uh, challenging times, you know, globally and uh, in the U.S. for sort of Web3 and sort of the importance of sort of creating new partnerships and in really sort of scaling um, Web3 onboarding. Um, that's what everyone has been talking about for the entire year. And now it's time to, to do it. Um, so it really begs the question, Tyler, what do you foresee these two communities doing more together, um, you know, here on based on sort of these early signs? Yeah, I would foresee there's actually a lot to do together. So, for example, Mochaverse holders, they can actually make a proposal to ApeCoin. And I think the whole design about 1.5 million, uh, so specific about 1.5, is because we don't want um, the voting powers to be so deterministic about and to uh, basically eventually disrupt the whole a coin uh, voting mechanism so 1.5 is actually carefully designed by looking at all the data of the previous proposals in uh, a coin DAO. so um obviously like uh, if animal brands uh, treasury has more than 1.5 million a coin and um like we, we choose to do taking like a portion of that is mainly for that reason. We don't want to swing the vote determin deterministically. 
Um, but then we also want to make sure there's sufficient influence in a way that can it will foster cross-community collaboration. So almost like you can imagine like local first holders proposing something that potentially using a point and uh, adopting a point like that would be a women situation for both. If you ask me, um, potentially, um, probably, probably this very experimental, but let's say, like, for example, right, the DAO actually proposed do, doing a token swap with uh, Mocha, be, between Mocaverse and Apecoin, and then like each treasury actually has mutual interest and incentive, um, and everyone has skin in the game to actually drive cross community collaboration in the future. So, um, I think something would be uh, very experimental uh, going forward. And Apecoin is supposed to um, advocate open metaphors as a whole um, and not just about like utilize assets, right? And providing utilities towards that. So I, I think what would be interesting is the new special counsel uh, candidates and the, the actual special counsel to be elected. I would say it's very important not only from um, being basically like the gatekeeper for the DAO, but also um, the candidates with sufficient influence in the industry, they can actually drive this narrative about cross-community collaboration. So yeah, really excited to see that. Um, there are a lot of great special counsel um, candidates, right? Like if you look at um, Captain Trippy, like Wabam with like legal background and then um there's just a bunch of like really great um candidates and one actually uh candidate that stand out is he's probably the only asian um in the candidate list right if you look at the special counsel candidates like actually most of them are um actually from europe right or from uh, north america so um, actually, I think uh, Carmen Pock is the only one um, who is uh, representing the Asian region. And also at the same time, like has been um, in Mocha first community from day one, like has been driving um, a lot of the community events. And he even offered help to um, do Mocha DAO uh, proposal analysis. So um, he's been like one of the biggest uh, advocates for, for Mocha first community and that's also why you can see that more than 50 percent of the mocha votes actually go to carmen pocket and he is basically after the mocha verse votes he is going to be the number one um number one leader um actually in in the eight point uh special council election yeah he has a decisive uh lead at the moment like uh overpowering lead well, I think it is probably uh, not going to be overpowered because um, if you look at 50% of our vote is going to be um, 750,000. And I think he got about like 500,000 uh, from eight point. So it's not entirely from us. And uh, I think Captain Trippy and um, uh, and Swicky, like they actually got 1.2 million. So I think like after the Mocha first votes, it's going to be very, very close. Um, but the first round is about uh, the top five getting into the second round. So uh, whoever is getting to the um, uh, second round, they will have like another round of voting and election. Yeah, yeah. I can just say from moderating the debate with Swicky and uh, Wabam, these are very thoughtful individuals that are deeply passionate about sort of the the values of Mochaverse and 8.0 and, and are taking this process very seriously. So Tyler, what's next for, for Mochaverse? What can we look forward to in the coming months and dare I say years? I don't know. What's on the what's on the roadmap here? Yeah, so I, I was just want to say uh, whatever we are building, we're building for um basically something that can be composable uh, across like Odyssey partners and the industry. So uh, if you follow our news, we just launched our marketplace uh, powered by wearable. And um, it, you can almost see that marketplace in the future can be interoperable with the other projects. And it doesn't have to be any Mocha Brands projects, but actually you can see like future collection to be launching on the platform as well. Um, and uh, everyone probably would be following the XP system as well. Uh, the XP system is, is is very experimental. So it's basically like a social reputation 
that actually represent you as a MOCA for sanity holders um, from four perspectives. Uh, one is from uh, basically sticking, and then the second is being socially engaged. The third one is participating in Odyssey partners, such as playing games, scoring high. Um, and a fourth one, which is pretty important, is participating in proposals and DAO and uh, providing thoughtful suggestions to the community. Um, so you can almost see this um, kind of XP system to be replicable with a lot of the Odyssey partners in the future. And um, the first two experiments with uh, R8 previously, which was a very successful event, which is to um, use XP as a way to get users to have a firsthand experience with a good product. Um, I think what is amazing is that we've received from a lot of the community members and saying, like, hey, like if it wasn't for the Mocha XP and Mocha First Anthe, I probably wouldn't have uh, downloaded the, the app and the game. But now I like, first tried it. And now uh, even after the campaign, we're still playing it on a daily basis. So I want to buy the NFT pass right now. So this is something that is amazing. And uh, we uh, intentionally experimented this um, and on purpose. And then like we, you can basically see like positive feedback from it. So I would say the Web3 growth model hasn't been figured out yet. And we're here to stretch the target and um, to, to experiment and to make it happen. Um, I don't think anyone has really figured out like what's the real user user acquisition, engagement, and retention referral funnel look like, and we are here to uh, make sure that we do that for the industry and exclusively for our Odyssey partners. Yeah, great stuff, and um, really appreciate you spending some time with us. I know you're you're off to uh, Singapore soon. Wish you well in, on that trip, and. Um, uh, excited to continue to have these updates with with uh, with with the different members of the MochaVerse community um, and mix it up a little bit and uh, do content on on in sort of the Web three world as well, more Twitter Spaces and and whatnot. So uh, this was a great beginning to uh, future adventures. Yeah, thanks a lot. Really excited for it. it this, I would just want to say this is a great platform to share updates with you guys. And like, it's a really great platform uh, and, and just chilling and chatting with you guys in general. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 nice to get this inside scoop on, on everything cool happening um, in a community that we care a lot about. So thanks for joining us, Tyler. Thanks a lot. The views and opinions expressed on the Edge of NFT podcast reflect solely those views and opinions of the show creators and its guests. We're learning as we go, just like you. Please make sure to do your own research. Our podcast is not financial advice. There are multiple strategies and not all strategies fit all people. You understand that you are using any and all information available on or through this podcast at your own risk.